welcome back to the Janome Life YouTube channel. My name is Erin and today I'd like to show you a couple of quick little projects that you can complete with your Janome C30 sewing machine. So first up I'm going to show you how to create this cute little zipper pouch made with a zipper and a length of fabric and you don't need interfacing or anything we're going to do it self-line style and I'm going to show you how to use the zipper foot for top stitching. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get my machine threaded. So it's already threaded with the with white thread and with the bobbin in. And we're going to start off with using stitch number one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew our fabric together on the raw edges, on the raw edges here, into a tube. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm folding my fabric right sides together. So the wrong sides are going to be out and I'm going to sew down this edge here with just a simple straight stitch. So I'm going to lower the presser foot and I'm just going to line the fabric up with the side of my foot, which is approximately three eighths of an inch. It's not really necessary to back stitch at this time. We're going to do more stitching here so that everything is straight. So just sewing a straight seam here. And I'm going to lift that and cut the tails with the thread cutter on the side. So we have our um, first seam, which turns our fabric into a big long tube. And so I'll just trim those threads there on the edge. And then I'm going to turn the um, fabric tube right side out. So now this is what we have is we have a length of fabric that is doubled on itself with a fold at one end and a seam at the other. So at this time you would probably want, you want to take this over to your ironing station and just give those seams a quick press. Once you have pressed the both short ends of your fabric, you can then pin the first short end to the zipper tape and attach the zipper foot to your machine. And we're going to top stitch and attach the fabric to the zipper in one step. And we're gonna stitch right down this area here just with a straight stitch. So we're going to unzip the zipper a little bit to make sure that that zipper head is out of the way. And then I'm going to lower the presser foot and make sure that I am aligning my fabric with this edge of the foot. And I'm going to hold my tails, my thread tails, and begin sewing. And then as I approach the pins, I do want to remove them. I don't want to sew over pins. And then once I get past the zipper head here, I'm going to close the zipper. And then I'll put the presser foot down and continue sewing. finished so I can put the needle up and remove my fabric and we can see that we have a nice straight top stitch and construction stitch at the same time. So we're going to repeat the process and attach the other side to the zipper. Okay so I have pinned the other side to the zipper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the zipper and place the fabric underneath here and sew the same way the right side of the zipper and the zipper tape. So if you want to take the first couple of stitches on the zipper tape itself that's okay. That is going to just anchor our placement here and make it just a little bit easier. So I'm going to start sewing now. 
and I'm going to again top stitch and do the construction stitches at the same time. And then just removing the pins as you come to them. And if you find that your fabric has shifted a tiny bit, that's okay. We're going to square up our little pouch as we close the ends in. So that's finished and we'll take it out and have a look to see what we've got. So again, we've got nice straight um, top stitching on our zipper. So now that the zipper is attached, I have turned my little pouch inside out. So we are now looking at the inside of the project and we can see that I've added some pins on the sides. Our next task is going to be to stitch on the sides of the little bag on the inside and leave approximately a 3 8 seam allowance so that we can finish the edges with an overcasting stitch. So let's do that now. So we're going to so I'm going to line up the edges here with the edge of my presser foot. And I'm just going to stitch a straight stitch and I am going to back stitch at this time as well. So we'll go forwards and then press the back stitch button so that we do a back stitch. And then sew. So I'm just going to remove the pins as I come to them. And sew as straight as you can. And then I'm going to back stitch at this end. So I'll take that out. And now when I sew on the other side, I'm going to open the zipper. So I'm just going to open the zipper and leave a little opening here and sew down the side seam. So doing a back stitch, removing my pin, and as I get to where the zipper is here, I'm just going to hold the uh, both sides of the zipper tape together and then continue down. Back stitch at the end and then so now that we have the edges closed I'm going to take some scissors and just trim off the zipper tape on both sides of the zipper Stitch number 11, I think. So I'm going to use the button here to increase to number 11. So now that I have this set up to stitch 11, I'm going to sew again on my outside edges. And this time I'm going to secure my end with a lock stitch. So I'm going to do a lock stitch first, and then it's going to begin sewing. I'm running my raw edges right along the edge of where the stitch goes on the outside. And this stitch is also very useful for sewing knits as well. You can do that with this machine. So I'm almost at the end and I'm going to hit the lock key again and it's going to finish and do a locking stitch for me. So this is what it looks like when we use that overcasting stitch. And even though I'm a little bit wonky right here, it doesn't matter because this is on the outside edge of the seam allowance. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. 
starting with a lock stitch and then begin sewing. And that little sound is just going over the teeth of the zipper. The teeth are nylon, so you, you can sew over top of those. If I was using a zipper with metal teeth, I would not sew over top of the teeth. So we're almost at the end, and I'm going to do a lock stitch again. So that I get my stitches to tie off. And then lift the presser foot. And take we can see that we have a nice finished edge here and so now all that's left is just to turn the little bag right side out so now we can see our little zipper bag is all finished everything is turned out and we poked the corners out and when you open up on the inside you see the same fabric as the outside so this is a quick and easy little project that you can do with just a few items that you have laying around in your sewing room the next little project I would like to show you is how to do some heirloom sewing on your C30 sewing machine. So I've got some fabric, some elastic, some Madeira poly neon embroidery thread and some sheets of embroidery stabilizer. So what we're going to do is we are going to use stitch number 29 to do a scalloped finish on the bottom and top edges of the fabric. And then we are going to use stitch number 16 to add some elastic smocking to the top part of the fabric so that we can make a little dress for an 18 inch doll. So I have the fabric all set up here with the raw edge of my fabric lined up with the edge of my stabilizer and I'm using the half inch seam allowance mark on the needle plate here. And so I'm going to add the satin scallops all the way down the top and the bottom of the length of fabric. So as we look at our satin stitches here, we can see that I think we still need to adjust our bobbin thread just a little bit. So I'm just going to lift this up and check the threading. So making sure that the bobbin looks like a P. Going in and then going around that and then we'll use needle up down so that it loops through here to the top and then I'll pull it through. And then put this little handy cover back on. So I'll go back to where we left off. And we're going to keep stitching. So we're going to continue this satin stitch all the way down both sides of the fabric and when that's finished I'll come back. So now that the satin stitching is done the next thing I'm going to do before I remove the stabilizer is take a pair of scissors and trim my fabric along the scallops. So you don't have to be right quite close to the edge, but you do want to be fairly close so that you see the little scallops on the bottom edge of the fabric. So it's a little fiddly, but definitely worth the end result. So I'm going to do that on both of my edges where I have done the scallop stitching and then I will come back and show you how we're going to do the smocking with the elastic. So all of our scallop stitching is done and 
We've trimmed the fabric now to be approximately 12 inches tall by 23 inches long. And so now we are going to add some elastic across the top. We're gonna to do about three rows of elastic and the elastic is gonna be cut to approximately 12 inches long. And I'm gonna draw some marking lines on my fabric so that I know where I need to stitch. So I have my marking lines and I have attached, I have found the center of my piece of elastic and I have matched it to the center of my piece of fabric and pinned it there so that I only have to worry about stretching one side of the elastic at a time. And now I'm going to adjust my stitch to be stitch number 16. So now I will take the end of the elastic and I will put it underneath the end of my mark here. And the first thing that I'm going to do before I start sewing is I'm going to do a lock stitch to hold that elastic in place. So we'll get this underneath the presser foot and just going to reduce the width of the stitch down to a three and then I'm going to do the lock stitch. So we'll start here with the lock stitch and then we will begin at doing our elastic stitch here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with one hand, I'm going to stretch the elastic and the other hand I'm going to use to keep the elastic underneath my line. And then once I have enough on the back, I will continue to keep it stretched from the back. So I'm just going slow here until we get going. So now I've got a little bit that I can grab. And we can keep it stretched. So I used um, a pen that is an air erase pen so that when it's all finished, my marking line will be gone. So I'm just going to stop and reposition and make sure that I'm still in the right spot and continue going. So I'm not really pulling the fabric through. I'm more just maintaining the stretch of the elastic so that the feed dogs can pull the fabric through underneath. And I am going to sew right up until I get to the pin so that I don't lose my center. And then I'm going to put the needle down and then I'm going to take out the pin and I'm going to reposition the pin at the end of my marking line. So just keeping it stretched out so that it's at the end. And then I'm going to continue sewing and making sure that my elastic is underneath my marking line. getting to the end so I'll go back to how I was holding it before and I'm going to sew right until the pin and then when I get to the pin I'm going to do a lock stitch again. So we can see that we've got a really cute little 
um, smocked gathering on our fabric. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the process two more times. So with these two marking lines, and then I will show you how to attach everything together. So my elastic is now attached and I have tried on the little dress to the doll and I have made marks of where I need to sew up the back so to finish off the back seam of the little dress. So I'm going to sew with a stitch number one, lining up on those marks and then I'm going to stretch the top part where the elastic is so that I can get a consistent seam allowance down the back of the dress. So I'm going to put the foot down and I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start sewing and then I'm going to do a reverse stitch. So we're getting close to the top of the elastic now. So I'm going to follow this line here in the fabric, sort of the... It's part of the how the fabric is. And then now I'm going to take this pin out and I'm going to stretch out both the top and the bottom sets of elastics so that they are as flat as I can get them. And then I'm going to continue sewing right across everything. Oh, and I get and then we're done. So now the little dress is sewn and before I cut the excess off, I'm going to try it on the doll. So this is Taryn. This is my daughter's little uh, Maple Leah doll wearing her new beach dress. So we can see that the elastics are even and the gathers are nice and even and the scallop edge of the fabric just looks so adorable. So you can easily create heirloom style sewing with your Janome C30 machine. I hope you enjoyed our video today. Please make sure you check out Pinterest for all of our um, project suggestions and project ideas and you can also follow our blog which is um, janomilife.wordpress.com and also you can follow us on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook as well. Have a great day!